Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at how to fix various problems within Windows operating system, primarily focusing on Windows Update and also the Windows Store. So let's get straight into it, over onto the computer. Okay, so in today's video we're taking a look at primarily the Reset Windows Update tool. So this is actually a really useful little tool, it's free of charge, and this is a version which has been kind of modified from the original Microsoft one, which is the WR Reset. Um, this is the homepage. I'll leave some links in the video description so you can download it for yourself, but essentially it works on Windows 8, 8.1, Windows 10, and also Windows 11, which is which we'll be running on today. It does give you options in the actual main site, it tells you about the glossary, about individual things, what they mean, DISM, etc., registry, SFC, WinSock, etc. So if you want more references, there are some links here as well to the update components, file system checker, etc., and also the licensing agreement, all that kind of stuff. So what you're going to want to do is to head over to the download section in this top left hand corner and download the latest version. Now there are older ones available, but we're going to go with the latest one. So just click on download and choose the location to save it to. So we're going to save this to our Windows desktop. And then we can minimize this window. And there we've got this application. So we can just double click that. And this will start the installer. And just agree to all the terms and conditions, etc. And where you want to install it, I would say probably your best bet is to install it in the default location. Have shortcuts should you wish to. Once you're happy, click on next. And it will install it. So that is that part done. So now we've got a new icon, which is our reset Windows update tool. So what you're going to want to do is to actually right click on this and choose run as administrator. And I'll show you what happens if you don't. You choose your language and then it says you're not running as administrator. This tool cannot do its job. So yeah, press any key to continue and it will close. So make sure you right click and choose run as administrator. If you don't have administrative privileges on the PC, this won't work and you'll need to obtain those from whoever manages or maintains your system. So once we're in, now we can see the terms and conditions. So you want to agree to those, just press the Y button and then enter. And then we get up this whole set of menus. So there's 19 options included in here and also some other ones at the bottom for close, etc. But these are the key ones. So the first one is open system protection. So if we do number one, and this will open up basically system restore. So to make sure that you've got system protection set as on, this way you can do system restores to a point where the system was last known to be working good. Whether you want this on or off is entirely up to you. Obviously, it does make sense to do a backup of the system before you do any changes. This ideally is going to rectify problems with the operating system. So whether you want to back up the old one or not is down to the individual, but you can certainly do it from this menu here. A lot of these options will actually just open up Windows settings, but some of them are actually really helpful and will basically automate scripts that you would normally run to fix Windows issues. So let's go through step by step. So number two, resets the Windows Update components. So clearly, if you're having issues with Windows Update and it says that you can't do them or there's errors, etc., you can just do that. So if we give you an example, press two, hit enter, and it'll go through, and basically it'll go through running various commands, getting rid of the old settings, etc., etc., and restoring parts of the actual operating system. You may get some error messages. This is quite normal. And at the end, you want to see a success. And as we can see, there's a few options coming up now with success on. So that is basically doing what it needs to do. Just leave it to do its thing. And there we go, starting the Windows Update service again after kind of cleansing it. And when it's done, it'll say press any key to continue. So at this point now, you could, if you wanted to, head over into your Windows settings and try and do Windows Update from the Windows Update section here. And if you're having any problems here, then obviously those should now work. If it works, great, that's it, we're done. We don't need to do anything else. You can just close the software, uninstall it if you want to. But if you're still having problems, then there's other options you can try. So some of the problems we get with Windows is temporary files. Now, before we go ahead and do number three, which is deleting the temporary files in Windows, do be reminded that this is running as an administrator. So this will remove all temporary files that are not in use with the system. So these will basically be gone. That's it, they're not into recycle bin or anything. They are gone, gone. So we're going to do three, and as you can see, it just goes through, and that's it, it's done. So there's no interaction at all, it just clears the lot. Now, for most people, it's going to be absolutely fine, but I just wanted to give you a heads up that this is running as administrator. 
There's no uh, second guesses on this. It just does what it needs to do. Next one is number four for Internet Explorer options. You can choose that if you want to. It's not really relevant in this particular case. So the rest of these are all basically going to be for cleaning up the Windows system image. So you've got options here for runs check disk. So that's always worth doing, running check disk. And essentially, if you run these in order as you go through, it should clean up your system and pretty much rectify most problems. So we can run check disk number five. It'll probably say it needs to be rebooted at the next time. So yeah, the next time we reboot, click yes there. And basically, it's going to be when you reboot the system the next time, it'll do a scan on the C drive. So that's excellent. Check disk will run. And really, at this point, you should do a restart and let it do that before you carry on doing the others. But for obviously, for time purposes and for the purpose of this particular video, we're just going to carry straight on. So the next one is number six. So this is sfc.exe or the system file checker tool. So type in six and press enter. And there you go. This will actually scan through your Windows operating system files, see, if, look for any corruptions, and uh, hopefully try and repair them. This is uh, one of those things that's probably worth doing routinely. If you're having a system with blue screens of death, all that kind of stuff, where you're getting random crashes, freezing, it could well be because of a corrupted system file. So running sfc.exe, you can do that manually, of course. You can just go into the command prompt, elevated command prompt, obviously, as an administrator, run sfc.exe, then space forward slash scan now, and it will go ahead and do essentially what it's doing now. This is just really a more automated way of doing it. When it gets to the end, it'll say the operation completed successfully, or at least I hope it will, and press any key to continue. So we'll press that, and this takes us back to the menu again. So essentially, again, these are all going to be the similar sort of things. So we've done number six. You can do number seven, which is going to scan the Windows component store. Again, similar sort of deal. This is all based around the DISM, or the kind of system management of the actual Windows image. And you can, if you wanted to, you can run this manually by typing in the DISM space four slash scan health. So this is basically checking the image to make sure that your Windows image is all okay, fine, no problems with it. So this is what you would normally do as for the first part. Again, a lot of this is just automating a process which normally we'd end up doing from the command line and kind of remembering the commands and prefixes, etc., etc. So this is just simplifying the job. So when it comes to the end, you'll get 100% and it will say either no component store corruptions were found or detected. And if it does come up with, there is issues or problems and obviously we can rectify that in the next part. So this is done, so we can press OK or press Enter. And then obviously we can go through. Number eight is essentially checking to see if the previous one was flagged. Number nine is the one that we probably want for most people. So press nine, this basically performs a repair operation automatically. So we can go ahead and do that again. This is all part of the DISM restore health argument, as it says there at the top. So again, a little bit of a waiting process to go through. This will essentially clean up your Windows system image. When we get to the end, again, it says the uh, restore operation completed successfully. Press any key to continue. So we'll go ahead and do that. Again, you can keep going through these if you want to. So number 10 cleans up the superseded components in the Windows Store and the update settings for the Windows Update components. Number 11 is delete any incorrect registry values. Now this is actually quite useful as well for cleaning up the registry. Whether or not we actually need to clean or correct the registry is one of those things which is always up for debate, but certainly it can't do any harm. And the reason I say that is because this actually will back up your existing registry should you need to restore it. So just to show you how that works, we're gonna type in 11. And there we go, it says it's making a backup of the registry and it's gonna save it to your desktop in this backup section. So this is gonna be a backup of the registry. If for some reason, whilst doing this, something goes badly wrong, you can use this backup folder to actually restore your registry in its entirety back to basically how it is at this moment. Once it's done again, you get the option to press any key to continue. Next one is for the WinSock. So this is more related to kind of Windows actually getting on the internet and all that kind of stuff. So you can repair and reset the WinSock. That's always worth doing. Number 13 is to reset the Microsoft Windows Store. Again, if you're having problems with the Windows Store, this is a really good one to do, so you can go ahead and reset that. Number 14, force group policy update, so you can do that, again, similar sort of deal. And 15 is the search for Windows updates, which is basically gonna and it'd be an easy way of finding that bit we found earlier, so the Windows update section. So it's just basically creating a shortcut to it. 
Also, you've got options here for finding the Windows product key. This actually is a little bit hit and miss. Uh, it doesn't show it properly on my particular version. So yeah, it just shows it OEM key because it was an upgrade from 10 to 11. So that is a little bit hit and miss. Then obviously you've got things like explore other local solutions. This will just open up the kind of like the inbuilt help sections within Windows itself. And number 18 is essentially the same, but the online version. And number 19 is the one to restart your PC, which you don't really need, but you certainly can do. If you want to find any more stuff on this settings or anything like that, you can use the question mark or use the asterisk to get settings or help. And obviously zero is to close it or alternatively you can just close it up here. But hopefully by going through these in a relatively methodical way, you don't necessarily need to do all the steps, obviously, as we've shown, but some of them are actually going to be really useful, especially the ones in this kind of middle section. Number two, obviously, is a good one. Running things like the system file checker is always a really good idea. And the component store things and actually repairing the Windows image is going to be really, really useful. So there we go. There's some nice, easy ways of actually using some of the normal command line tools that we all tend to use from time to time when we're trying to rectify issues with our PC. So whether it's installing an NVIDIA driver, installing an AMD driver, if you're getting any problems with installing those kind of drivers for graphics cards, this is definitely going to be useful, especially that system file checker. If you're getting things like the error code 41 on certain graphics card drivers, that is definitely worth going through this particular process. Obviously, Windows update problems, that does plague us all from time to time, although some of us are probably glad that it isn't updating all the time, but for some people, you do want to get those updates on a regular basis, especially things for Windows Defender or the security aspects of things. So let me know what you think about this one in the comments section below. I actually think it's a really nice and easy way of actually using those command line tools, which we normally would use, and it means you don't have to remember them or go to another web page and actually copy and paste them into your command line, etc. So yeah, it is very, very useful. It can be a little bit on the dangerous side, obviously. Like I said, it is running as administrator, so anything it tries to do is kind of final. There isn't a recycle bin option, although it does, as we've seen, actually make a backup of your registry. So potentially, if things do go a little bit wrong, at least you've still got a backup of your registry. You could, if you wanted to, always copy that from your desktop onto a USB stick just to be extra safe. That way, if something goes really badly wrong, at least you've got it on a memory stick so you can recover from a recovery console, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, like I said, let me know what you think about this one in the comments section. We will be pinning this in most of the tech channels on our Discord. So if you want to get it easily and you don't want to go to the website to get it, etc., then that is an option. Obviously, if you're still getting problems and you want more technical help, then we do have the Discord chat, which you're more than welcome to join, and we'll try and help you out as best we can. We're not magicians, but we certainly try to be. So anyway, that's going to do for this one. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.